This is Lesson 3.1b, the second part of 3.1. We're going to learn about classifying rational numbers. From what we learned in the previous video, 3.1a, we now know that rational numbers include fractions, decimals, integers, and whole numbers. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. And remember, an integer is a positive or negative whole number, so these are integers. Notice there's no fractions or decimals here. And a whole number is a counting number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are counting numbers. Those are whole numbers. A Venn diagram is a visual representation used to show the relationships between groups. So here we have a Venn diagram showing mammals, dogs, and pugs. And here we have Tippy, who's a pug, and Spot, who's not a pug, but he is a dog. We can put Tippy into the group of pugs. And Spot is not a pug, but Spot is a dog. So Tippy belongs to the group pugs, dogs, and mammals, where Spot just belongs to the group dogs and mammals. We can use a Venn diagram to help us classify and sort numbers. This Venn diagram shows how rational numbers, integers, and whole numbers are related. And the number 12 belongs in all three sets. Notice the whole numbers are inside the integers and it's inside rational numbers. So, it's a whole number, integer, and rational number. Negative 7 belongs in two sets, two groups, integers and rational numbers. And 25 hundredths and 2 thirds belong in one set, rational numbers. And the word Venn is capitalized because it's named from its inventor, John Venn. So he's a capital V. The Venn diagram shows the set of rational numbers includes the sets of integers and whole numbers. It shows the whole numbers are integers and that the whole numbers and integers are rational numbers. A flowchart can help us classify rational numbers. We start by asking ourselves, is it a counting number? If it is, we put it into whole numbers. If it's not, we ask, is it a negative whole number? If it is, we put it into integers. If it's not, we ask, can it be written as a negative or positive fraction? If it can, then we put it into rational numbers. So the first thing we're going to ask is, is it a counting number? So we can do the easy ones first. 14 is a whole number. That's a counting number. 2, that's a whole number, that's a counting number. And 0, that's a counting number. So we know those are the whole numbers. I also see that negative 3, that's a negative whole number. We're going to put that into integers. Now we need to look at these. Look at 12 thirds. Now, that looks like a fraction, but if we simplify this, and think 12 divided by 3, well, 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4 whole. So that means this 12 is actually a 4 whole. We can put it into whole numbers. So that's a tricky one. That's a really tricky one because it looks like it's written as a fraction, but when we simplify it, it's 4 whole. That's a whole number. Now look at 10 sevenths. What happens if we simplify this one? How many sevens are in 10? Well, there's only one. And how many would be left over? Three. That means this is equal to one and three sevenths. So it's not a whole number, but it is written as a fraction. We can put this into rational numbers. And we can look at the next one. The next one says half. Well, that's not a counting number. Is it a negative whole number? Nope. 
Is it written as a negative or positive fraction? Yes, so it's going to go into rational numbers. What about this one? This is six-tenths. Well, it's not a counting number. It's a decimal. Is it a negative whole number? Nope. Can it be written as a negative or positive fraction? Well, that's tenths. We can write this as six-tenths. So yes, that is a rational number. Okay, now what about this one? Is this a counting number? No, there's a fraction here. Is it a negative whole number? No. Can it be written as a negative or positive fraction? Yes. We learned before in grade school that we can do 4 times 7 is 28, and then we add the numerator 2, so that's 29, 30, and we write it over that denominator. This is a rational number. Now we have negative 1 third. Is it a counting number? No. It's not a whole number, it's a fraction. Is it a negative whole number? Well, it is a negative, but it's not a whole number. Can it be written as a negative or positive fraction? Yes, this is a rational number. So be very, very careful. You may need to simplify some fractions to see if they're really whole numbers. Okay, be very careful. And remember, you can write a decimal as a fraction. Now, I know there's a couple of word problems in this unit that deal with this. You want to remember when solving word problems to include all people or objects. So if the word problem says Emma and two friends, that means there's three people. Emma's one and two more. That's three people. So be very careful when you're dividing and it says something like Bill and four friends. Well, that would be five people. You want to read it carefully and make sure you're including all the people. Our next lesson is 3.2a. We're going to talk about positive and negative rational numbers, opposites. Then we're going to do the second part of 3.2, 3.2b, and talk about absolute value of rational numbers. Keep trying your best. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.